Welcome to Creatively Using the Create Suite. Here's your host, Eric Burnskill. Hello, welcome to this episode of the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. My name is Eric Burnskill, and today I'm going to show you a great technique for creating, turning a pattern that you want to use in a website design and turn it into a seamless pattern that you can easily repeat when you're coding your design. Because let's face it, when you're dealing with web design, it's very hard to get served these great, really beautiful textures for backgrounds, etc. Uh, that you can use on the website, seeing as it's supposed to be able to be scaled up and down to infinite proportions, especially up without any problems. So how can I do this really easily? Well, it turns out you don't need to create a whole doc or a whole file from the background as it looks in the PSD file right now. You can actually take a small part of it and turn it into a repeatable pattern using two techniques here. One is the absolute marvelous Conanware fill that was introduced in Photoshop CS5. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, what I've opened here is a web design, which I've done for a client of mine. I've just removed the logo here a bit uh, and some other information here. But it's the, basically the same site. You can see how it's supposed to end up. But it's really a pain having this normally very beautiful texture background. And it would be great to get that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide everything on here. So header, the content, and I'll just end up with the texture and this pattern behind. And what I want to do, and I actually have this, uh, had this in, in tiles before. So what I want to do now is just make a selection. I'm going to hold down shift to keep it square. So I'm going to make a good selection. Let's do it about, whoops. Uh, here in the middle of the page, and I'm going to just create a fairly good selection here. And I'm going to start out big. You can do it small as well. In this case, I think because of the texture that we have, it's good to have a, a fairly good sized selection made instead of using the smallest possible. It's still going to be significantly smaller in file size compared to how we've done the full page 1000 pixels wide, 2000 pixels wide, this is going to be much better, but still offer us that repetitive pattern that we're after. So maybe I can do a little bit smaller here. Let's go with this. What I'm going to do since I have a multi layer document is I'm going to hold down my shift key, command key on the Mac, control key on the PC, and then C. So shift, control or command C. And this is going to basically copy a composite. So it's not just going to copy the layer you're on, but from all layers. And then I'm just going to deselect this, Command or Control D, and then I'm going to create a new file um, on the same, it's going to automatically use the clipboard settings. Click OK. And I'm going to paste this right into here. Now, it is a pretty good repetitive pattern as it is, but we're going to make this a really good pattern. So what I'm going to do is go to Filter. I'm going to go to Other and choose Offset. And this is where... This is a filter that you very rarely use, but it's great for making these seamless patterns. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set roughly the same amount of shifting as amounts to about half of the document that we had. Okay, uh, And it's important that we do the same for vertical and horizontal shifting here. So what we had, let's see, we had a document that was 316. So let's make that 300, scale it down just a bit. It's easier to work with. So filter other again, go to offset, and I can do 150 here to the settings. Now this is not going to be the most obvious pattern right here, but you can still see how certain areas repeat. Now what this does, it is basically going to create and fold it in, wrap around, it's important that you have wrap around set, it's going to shift it so that it divides into four different sections and we have it now split in the middle here and the middle here. So I'm going to do, click OK, and if I zoom in I can probably see that it's not it has sort of edge and it's cross in the middle. What I want to do is get rid of that. In versions before CS5 Photoshop, you can always use the clone stamp tool, clone this away. But in CS5, it's a lot easier by just grabbing the lasso tool, 
and just make a selection around a problem area. Shift backspace, going to bring up the fill dialog and you can choose con and aware. Click OK, it's going to fill that. And I'm going to do just a few other areas which where I notice that there are different problems. And what I need to do again, because I've modified the pattern, I want to make sure I run offset again. And I did that by Command F to run the last filter that I applied. I'm just going to go touch up a few of the areas that I notice that I don't don't want in here. I'm going to run the offset again till I think it looks fairly nice. And this is what I'm going to have this repetitive pattern that's very easy to handle. So I think this is going to look fairly good. And what I want to do is just get rid of signs, obvious signs that this is a generated pattern. So I think this is going to look really good. What I need to do now is I've basically created my pattern right now. I just need to save it out, put it into my code, and then repeat it as I wish. And it's going to turn out really great as you'd expect. So you can do this on pretty much any type of pattern. It doesn't have to be this fine. It can also be um, objects, shapes, colored objects, anything. You can always try and run offset. You might have to do a little bit more job with pairing them up again, depending on the complexity you have. But for having these finer patterns, this is a really simple and easy, dead easy technique. Filter offset, lasso tool, underwear fill to patch that up. So that's how you make a seamless website background texture pattern. Long tutorial name inside of Adobe Photoshop CS5. My name is Eric Burnskill. Thank you for tuning in to the Creatively Using the Creative Suite podcast. I'll be back next week with another tutorial. Bye bye for now.